Welcome. We have another superhero box. Ah, this one's in my uh, Japanese cardboard boxes. I love to ship these from Japan, and I kept them all the time because they were so durable and strong. I just couldn't let go. Okay, we have some early Hasbro Marvel Legends. Here's Danger. Creative character. Uh, it's a little past my time when I was reading the comics. I do like the design of all the character artwork from various artists on the side. They did a great job. I love the brood. Oh my God, I'm a huge brood fanatic for the X-Men comic. It's because I'm just crazy, obviously. But that's a brood queen. Looks a little weird to me. Um, this is the fun stuff that I, you know, I was still into collecting at that point. Really, like, you know, get every character from every series. But at this point, just let this stuff go, man. Like, I, I'd rather be more excited to have a loose one and a loose brood queen than all the carded stuff right now. Let that go. Probably about 25, 30. I found that most of these superhero figures that are a little bit older, depending, of course, on the Build-A-Figure part, they run about 25, 30 Maybe a little more, maybe a little bit less. It's just they're not really going anywhere in price. Tigra, always a fan of Tigra. This this one definitely pops. All the variety of colors, everything just looks great. You get a Nimrod torso. Figure looks a little lanky. I, it just looks a little off to me. The hand painted hard copy looks ten times better, as always. That's why I love my prototypes. Really neat piece. Um, if I have a loose Tigra. I need to replace a uh, Nimrod torso. It's kind of weird. I love to scrounge at the end of toy shows or Comic-Con. A huge, weirdly passion of mine, but people leave so much good stuff behind at these shows. I'm telling you people. Now, this is the correct way to do it, though. I'm usually a dealer at these shows. I'm referring to a booth that has nobody there, no personal belongings, it's been empty for like two hours straight. It's 6, 7 p.m. at night. The show has 80% of the dealers long gone. Most of them are already in a different state already. And that's when you start scrounging around, kicking the boxes of, you know, well gone booths. And you can find some killer stuff. And at one show, it was at King County, uh, the couple that was running the booth, they were, again, long gone. Uh, probably about two to three hours, like that final scrounge. You do it when you find wrapped up all of your stuff. And they had a Nimrod full body that fell behind. Uh, I actually did talk to them later on the next show and they said, just keep it, man. But I need to replace the torso snap there over time, that yellow ch cheapy plastic. But still really cool to have the figures, but do I need to have everybody carded? So I'm betting to letting that one go. Okay, much more excited about this. The three and three quarter inch Marvel Universe figures I was really excited about. I got quite a bit of them. And let's see where I am at this point. Because again, they just keep making the characters over and over. And at this point, do I really get excited to have it all? Or just keep a couple characters? So here we have this two pack. I see I did a great job buying it on clearance. I did notice a lot of the two packs were on clearance more often than individual Captain America Winter Soldier not my uh, favorites to be honest with you so I can flip this puppy look at that it was $15 for retail at Target only that's pretty fair especially compared to now the prices this will be at like I don't I don't know I don't buy the new stuff now it's just way overpriced but like what would retail be this if it was brand new 2024 Hasbro 30 35 Oh, you have a comic. You need to pay $5 for that comic. So 35 15 a figure. It's just crazy. Being a Target exclusive may give a little bit of bump, but to my remembering knowledge of the past, a lot of the Marvel Universe figures, three and three quarter inch, are Target exclusives, technically. But I can let this go. I mean, you have to remember one of the worst things that you can entrap yourself with is to be a completionist. And that's where you sit back and say, well, I really don't care about these characters too much. But if I get these last five characters, then I have the full set. And that makes me feel better that I completed something. And that's a terrible mindset. Collect what you enjoy. Don't put yourself into that position. And with that statement, as I said, I'm not a huge like, oh my God, it's Captain America. 
So let's let this puppy go. I'm probably going to assume, again, 25 bucks. It's just how it is. We have some single carded. And I do like the single carded much more than the two packs. This will be a little more uncommon because they haven't made the first appearance Wolverine action figure that much because it just doesn't look that good. Let's just be straight honest with that. I, I shouldn't get caught up in this like whimpering mode of like, should I keep and should I not? All of this stuff is available. Collectors were buying this equal to the amount of kids playing with this. There's tons of this stuff packaged available online. If somehow I wanted to go back and get all this stuff, it's available any time of the day. Probably for the same price I'm going to sell it for if I let them go right now. So at this point, I'm not a big fan of this Wolverine, obviously. It's before my time. So I'll let that one go. I'm going to probably assume 15 bucks for the single carded. Havoc. Ugh. Oh. He looks pretty cool, but it's not like Havoc of the 80s and 90s that I remember so well. But I'll just let it go. Like I'm okay. But the artwork, though, this, this stuff is really solid. Hasbro did an excellent job. And I am a little sad that Anthony's Comics did work on a partnership with the original artist at Hasbro many, many, many moons ago. And all the original artwork that were inks, because all the coloring was done by computer were available for like three to four to five hundred dollars a piece and i was just like you know there's there's a division of new toys new prototypes new artwork versus the old and it's just i didn't buy any of it and i regret not buying a number of it, especially my favorite character shadow cat and regerts literally let that go and we were having a little bit of camera difficulty so we are off to gladiator and again these you know, well-known character. Looks great. A little, little dark on the red there. But, yeah, I'm, I'm just not getting excited. Cable would be badass. Basic Wolverine Apocalypse. Hell yeah. So, let him go. And, of course, Shadow Cat. We will keep the Shadow Cat. Uh, yeah, I sat there with that artwork bookmarked. And uh, I think it was in the shopping cart for purchase. But I was just, there's something about, you know, we're all the same way like this. There's something about paying full retail maximum price. And it just, you kind of just turn away or shy away from that. And that, that's my fault. If there's something unique as original artwork is or a hand painted prototype, which I also left behind, it was damaged. Should have bought it. You should buy it. You know, not every instance, but it's an item that won't come around again. And that's where I usually do pay premiums for certain specific really rare items because a year, half a year later, you're like, thank God I bought that. There was that original Transformer package artwork, uh, Fortress Maximus. I bought the original box painting for the G1 Fort Max and I paid a pretty damn big premium years ago. And I look back now and you're like, that was cheap. That was cheap. And if I didn't buy it, now I'd be just bitching about it right now. So I'm going to keep Shadow Cap. Oh, let's just finish off the Warpath. Yeah, he's cool. Warpath has always been cool. This is the red and blue version versus the silver, which is also cool. I like the fact they brought him in the uh, Future's Past movie, which was pretty decent. Keep, keep. Again, these aren't even big money. They're like 10 to $15. Let's see. We got Miss Marvel. Uh, I do like my original and the new outfit, Miss Marvel. Let's just put her aside for now because I'm when it comes to like Miss Marvel and a couple of her characters, I feel like Warpath, as I said, like 10 to 12 bucks each. There's just, there's almost at a point where like letting it go is just not even worth the effort. And the packages are pretty small. Black Widow, not bad. Um, but it might a loose one. Did she come in the two pack? And we got to wrap you up with. Ooh, that's a pretty cool Iron Man. But I'm not like a super Iron Man fan, but. Again, I just got to draw the line. It's like Excalibur, X-Men, my Marvel mutants. You just stay away from the other guys. So I said, we got to sell stuff, right, people? And I say that, of course, but I remember the Iron Man 2 action figures they produced. So many super sweet three and three quarter inch Iron Man figures. Guardsmen here. Oh, we have Hulkbuster. See, now I'm falling in love with all this stuff again. You're like, well, I already own it. Do I really need to sell it? No, you don't. Sell it. Ah. <sighs> Crazy, crazy, crazy. So the two packs, same thing. These were, you know, some are a little more difficult. Some sold a little better than others. But a number of these you can just find on discount at Target. This has a bubble ding. Enchantress in Thor, pretty cool to get. It's nice that they included Enchantress. It's a little uncommon character to produce. And it's nice to get something like that once in a while. 
it's only worth like 10 to 15 bucks. I might as well just keep it and pop it, right? Pop it, Tommy, pop it. Greatest line ever. Of course, keeping my X-Men 2 pack. That's pretty super sweet right there. And again, probably not big bucks. It's just how it is, man. Oh, that's super sweet too there. But again, what, 20 bucks, 15? But so that's the investment of this market. As I'm mentioning, like superhero toys are just collected by the fans. They're not super stoked and have those childhood memories attached to these things, which causes the market to go up. And even if there is children that did play with this stuff, so many of it was kept loose and packaged. The market's just teeming with them. Let's see what we got here. Polaris. Again, a common series in the flashback series. You can find all these figures for a buck each, like the domino I talked about earlier. Beat up card. I already have a loose complete. Just put it in a group lot to bounce her out to a new happy home. If I'm going to keep one, I want one on a clean card. So going back to the uh, original Toy Biz X-Men. So this is Sunspot. And I can be wrong. He, in my opinion, was more uncommon to get. A couple characters like Forge, Sunspot were just a little harder to find on the shelf when I was younger. He might be worth a little bit more money than the other characters. I think the market will reflect that. Even if you go through loose lots, you just don't see him that often. So he used to be a keeper just to cover my bases. Though the card's a little rough. 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 Speaking how X-Force was also not really that popular, look at this guy. So here's Gideon. I mean, even as a kid, it just didn't call to me. The outfit, the bland colors, just the basic sword. The only thing that calls me here is the original Shadowcat trading card artwork back there. Oh, my God. And yes, I will just say it. Shadowcat was my favorite character as a kid growing up. We're all weird like that. I'll be admitting to it. So I've always wanted to find the original Marvel Universe trading card art, number 26, was it, for Shadowcat from the first series never turned up. I haven't seen it yet. Of course, just by stupid luck of the world, Jim Lee did all the artwork for Shadowcat. So when this puppy showed up like four years ago, it sold for like 8000 And you're like, I ain't touching that. I'm not made of money. Just this basic lineup here and here. That just brings back a whole lot of happy memories. When I see this, it reminds me of the 84 Transformer catalog. Just staring at that. I mean, I was really young, but it just brings back warm memories. This is awesome. Oh, that with the little red highlights in there. Anyways, I can just go crazy for a while. Uh, we'll let go of Gideon. Speaking of Toy Biz, Toy Biz brought it home all the time. This is Silver Surfer. To this point, he doesn't get much love. Let's just be honest with you. Galactus gets more love than the Silver Surfer. Adam Warlock's a little more well-known now, but Toy Biz didn't care. They designed this beautiful figure, giant skull base with snakes coming out. This is just awesome. A lot of love was put into this line. Series 3, which means they're doing well, enough to make three of them. And these were the final, final series of Toy Biz, 1998. And this is the stuff, as I said earlier, we were talking about like, should we invest in this? Like, it's got to pop. This whole market's going to get super strong. It's a franchise that keeps going. I'm going to assume this figure, though uncommon, is probably only worth 10 bucks right now. Worth more to pop it open and have a loose, nice, clean, mint shape one than anything else. $3. Probably even paid less than that at a Comic-Con. We'll wrap it up with the two-pack. So, this is what I was mentioning earlier. I was visiting the Targets pretty often for like the discount stuff. And a lot of my local Targets had some great stuff because nobody visited them. And the markdowns would just get deeper and deeper. I picked up these for $2.37 each. You know, probably a full box to fill this whole thing up. I sold them over time for like 15 bucks each just to bounce them out. And I bet you, bet you right now, this is only worth 15 bucks. So, um, decent characters, original Iron Man, but... As I'm going through it, as I said, like, I just gotta let this stuff go. I like the single pack with that nice artwork. That's more exciting to me. Punisher, that's a little more uncommon for the uh, two packs. Again, if they're only worth 10 bucks each, I'll keep them. Oh, that's much better. Green Goblin with Spider Man. Oh, that's more tempting. We'll see how much that one's worth, and I'll keep it. And Wolverine versus the hand, versus the foot, versus the waist. Versus the head. I wonder how many various franchises have utilized just the body part and then ninja. Huh? 
kind of weird. So yeah, probably about 10 to 15 bucks each. Let's just let them all go unless like they're worth nothing. So that was an interesting box. We sold off, we haven't sold it yet, but that was quite a lot of stuff moving out. Excellent. We are going to move forward to a hell of a lot more cooler stuff. We have a Robotech box coming up. Vintage Robotech carded figures. Saw that and I was like, hell yeah. So thank you for watching and let's keep on rolling.